So as of recently, my educational institution has decided to further limit my access to the building because obviously we are in a pandemic. What that means is I have gone from having access to 50 plus awesome microphones to basically just this 57, and this Rode NT1, which I love, but I would rather have 50 microphones. This video is not gonna be very technical. It is basically just gonna be me counting down my top five favorite of my children who I'm not allowed to visit right now. Side note, I am allowed to rent these microphones. So if you specifically want to see a demo on one of these, just let me know. I mean, I'm a small channel. We can do this. I will see your comment. There's usually only like four, so I will see it. And I hate doing this, but if you do want to see a specific demo, you should probably subscribe. That way, when it comes out, you can see it. So let's get into the list. Number five the Royer 121. This is kind of considered to be like the standard microphone when it comes to ribbon microphones. It's got a more modern sound in terms of ribbon mics. So what does that mean? It's gonna be a little bit more robust. It's harder to break even though ribbons are pretty easy to break anyways. And it's gonna be brighter. It has more of a presence in the higher ranges like the 9Ks, the 8Ks. That way you can get more width out of the sound. It's great for drum overheads and acoustic guitar and electric guitar. In all these cases, it's gonna have a warmer sound to it. It's gonna kind of take out the high end a little bit. It's gonna sound a little bit more vintage. It's great for jazz, specifically with drum overheads. Honestly, it's great for everything. Just watch your SPL levels. Like with every ribbon microphone, they're really sensitive and they're prone to breaking if exposed to too loud of an audio signal. So just keep that in mind. Number four the Neumann TLM 67. Now this is the solid state predecessor. No. So this is the solid state predecessor to the Neumann U67. And we all know how that microphone ended up. And if you don't, go check Reverb. So there's another microphone in the studio that this is often compared to, that being the Neumann U87. I personally like the TLM67 a little bit better. This is because the U87s in my studio are prone to a lot of noise because they're used so often and the cable linkages inside of them aren't very great. They've just given me a lot of problems in the past, so I tend to go with the TLM67s instead. They have a beautiful, smooth, high-end response around the 9K range. What this means is you can use them for guitar, overheads, piano, and presumably vocals. We don't have the ability to test vocals right now because of Corona spit. They just have this smooth, beautiful, modern high end, which is a lot different than the Royer 121 warm low end that happens whenever we get like a vintage sound out of a microphone. Number three, the Electro Voice RE20. Now this microphone was originally used for radio broadcasting and that comes with a few benefits. You know it's gonna be great for vocals. Also because it was used for radio broadcasting, you know it's gonna be great at sound rejection. Those little grills that you see on the side of it, those aren't like places where you can sing into. It doesn't pick up any sound. They're actually used for sound rejection. The result is a really quiet microphone. Now, with a lot of vintage sounding microphones, they tend to do really well in the mid range and in the mid low ends, but they don't tend to have a lot of high end. Now, what that means whenever you get a good one is you can tend to use these same microphones, specifically the RE20, with things like bass and cello or a kick. So it's really versatile when it comes to that low end range. Plus they're just fun. Like in the sea of black metal microphones, there's just this weird submarine looking silver thing. And they're huge actually. Whenever you see them, they're really big. Yeah, I just, they make me happy. Number two, probably the best microphone in my subjective opinion on the list, the AKG C414. I have never found anything that this microphone is bad at recording. I've used it as a room mic, as piano, as drum overheads, on guitar cabs, on acoustic guitar, on horns. As I've said before, I just haven't used it for vocals because I'm, I'm literally not allowed to use it for vocals. It is just the quintessential standard perfect condenser microphone. It has multiple polar patterns inside of it, so you can get basically anything out of it, just like I should say with the TLM67. It's just a workhorse, and you should see the condition of the ones at my studio. They still perform perfectly, unlike the U87s. That's some shade thrown right there. Now, there are two kinds. There is one that's gold. I forget the exact name of the model, but it is more suited for vocals. It has a boost in the high end 
whereas the standard model, in my opinion, is a little bit more preferable because it is more versatile. It can be used for a lot of other things because it does not have that boost. Not to say that the gold one is not also going to be versatile, it just might bring out the high end more than you wanted to on a bassoon. Number one on this list probably is a microphone that you shouldn't get. Uh, it is kind of a luxury to have in a studio. It should not be your first microphone by any means. It is the Coles 4038. It is expensive. It is fragile. It's kind of weird looking and it sounds awesome. It has this weird oxymoron of like low end clarity to it. It picks up detail more than mics that have incredible boosts in the high end do and I can't figure out why. It's got this beautiful vintage warmth to it that I can't seem to get out of any other microphone as well. They are heavy and like well built and big. It feels substantial. They're still super fragile though so be careful with them just like with any ribbon mic and particularly with these. So with a harsher instrument like maybe cymbals or brass it takes the harshness out of it and brings this such a warm sound to it honestly these mics just make me happy they're just fun to hold they're fun to look at and they're fun to hear so like i said this wasn't really a technical video this is me reminiscing about the microphones that are just down the road but i still can't get into without a special appointment and like i said earlier if you'd like to see a specific run through of one of these microphones just leave it in the comments we can do a full test of it the only thing i cannot do is vocals because of the fact that the Corona spit will get all over the rented microphone. If you have any technical questions about these mics, please leave them in the comment. You guys know that I love answering comments. Some of you leave like a sentence long question and I give you a paragraph long response. So I will respond. <laughs> I'm just lucky to have had the opportunity to work with these mics to experience them and I am more than happy to share those experiences with others. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe and comment. I hate asking people to do that but apparently it helps the algorithm. Yeah, and I will see you in the next video.